of World News Tonight. Deal extended. Gaza troops extended by two days after Israel receives new list of captives. Bacteria outbreak. Australia issues urgent health alert over bacteria outbreak after a man dies in hospital. Sculpture Row. Rishi Sunak annoys Greece by scrapping meeting over Elgin marbles. And Renaissance. Beyonce's concert film produces glitz and glam at its global premiere in USA. is Adhaderana World News Tonight, reporting from Colombo. Here is Anuradhi Vikramasinghe. A very good evening and thank you for joining us on World News. We begin tonight in India. At least 27 people have died due to recent lightning strikes in neighboring nation. The highest number of deaths were reported from the tribal district of Dahod, where four people were killed. A day after unseasonal rainfall along with thunderstorms struck more than 230 of the 251 talukas in Gujarat, the death toll due to lightning strikes climbed to 27 across the state. According to officials, 23 people were reported to be injured and 29 houses were damaged. As per the data maintained by the State Emergency Operations Center, 71 animals also died due to lightning strikes in Gujarat. The highest number of deaths were reported from the tribal district of Dahod, where four people were killed. Three deaths were reported in Banaskanta and Baruch, and two in Tapi. Dahod district collector said that in all the cases of human deaths, the deceased were under trees when the lightning struck. And there is no other reason why there are more numbers recorded in the district because most of them were farmers. A majority of the districts received rainfall ranging between 1 to 144 millimeters, accompanied by thunderstorms damaging the standing crops. Meanwhile, Rajgoth and Mobi districts witnessed hailstorms too. Health Minister Ruskikesh Patel announced that the state government will undertake a survey to assess the damage caused to the farmers. Union Home Minister Amit Shah paid condolences to the families of the victims and said that the state administration was engaged in relief work. Officials say apart from causing damage to standing crops, the sudden showers also affected the ceramic industry in Mobi district, as factories were forced to remain shut. The unseasonal rains dipped the mercury levels too. The maximum temperature recorded a dip between 2 to 7 degrees from the normal temperature. The India Meteorological Department, in its latest bulletin, said that the state was likely to experience dry weather from today onwards, with minimum temperatures expected to fall by 4 to 5 degrees Celsius before rising during the next 4 to 5 days. And next to the unending terror in Myanmar. Almost three years on from its bloody coup, Myanmar's military junta is facing the biggest threat to its hold on power as it fights wars on multiple fronts across the Southeast Asian nation. In recent weeks, powerful armed ethnic militias have joined with resistance forces to mount major new offensives with unprecedented coordination, exposing the limits of the deeply unpopular junta's capabilities as it loses strategic border towns, key military positions and vital trade routes at a scale not seen in decades. An offensive named Operation 1027 launched in late October by an alliance of three powerful ethnic rebel armies in the country's northeast has since catalyzed into a nationwide push to take control of towns and areas in Myanmar's north, west and southeast. According to the United Nations, nearly 200 civilians have been killed and 335,000 people were nearly displaced by the fighting since 27th of October. Civil war between Myanmar's myriad ethnic armies and successive military governments has raged for decades, but the latest escalation in fighting comes off the back of nationwide public resistance to Army Chief Min Aung Hyang's February 2021 coup, which sacked the democratically elected government of Aung San Suu Kyi. In some hopeful news now, a deal has been reached to extend a truce between Israel and Hamas forces in Gaza by two days, continuing a pause in seven weeks of warfare that has killed thousands and laid waste to the Palestinian enclave. A deal to extend a truce between Israeli troops and Hamas forces in Gaza by two days was agreed on Monday. That's according to mediator Qatar, which has been facilitating indirect negotiations between the two sides with Egypt. The agreement lengthens a four-day ceasefire after seven weeks of warfare, 
which has seen thousands killed and laid waste to the Palestinian enclave. Hamas also confirmed the extension. There was no immediate comment from Israel. The release of 11 more Israeli hostages seized by Hamas during its October 7th assault on southern Israel was confirmed on Monday. As dozens of Gazans rushed to get supplies from aid rations distributed by the UN on Monday, many described the dire living conditions that they expect to worsen if war resumes. Raider Mohammed Jamal al Jabouri is one of them. We wish that the truce would be permanent and people would go back to their lives and to see each other. People have lost their families and relatives, and we are not able to reach our families. We don't know who we lost and who was still alive. We are coming here to try and get some clothes for our children because we left everything in our house. Children are wearing summer clothes. This is not right. God willing, the truce will be extended and will stay in place. We don't want more war. This is enough. This is so tough on us. On Sunday, Hamas freed 17 Israelis, including a four-year-old Israeli American girl, and Israel freed 39 teenage Palestinian prisoners. The truce, agreed last week, is the first halt in fighting since Hamas attacked Israel, when 1,200 people were killed and 240 hostages were taken back into Gaza. In Jerusalem, Israeli Anat Errol is also advocating for a pause in fighting. I'm against all violence and I, um, I really hope that there will be ceasefire and I really hope that uh, it will continue to be ceasefire because violence is not a solution for anything. I mean, I know that, uh, that those terrorists are, are like horrible, like they are, I can't even say they are. They need to, of course, personally they need to be punished, but not all the other people in Gaza need to be punished. In response to the October 7th attack, Israel has bombarded the Gaza Strip and mounted a ground offensive in the north. As of Monday, Gaza health authorities say some 14,800 Palestinians have been killed. Hundreds of thousands have been displaced. The Greek Prime Minister accused his British counterpart Rishi Sunak of cancelling a scheduled meeting in London in a diplomatic role over the status of the Parthenon sculptures. Let's take a look. Greek Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis accused his British counterpart Rishi Sunak of cancelling a Tuesday meeting in an ongoing row over the Parthenon sculptures, which have been a sore subject between the two countries for centuries. Mitsotakis said in a statement, quote, I express my annoyance that the British Prime Minister cancelled our planned meeting just hours before it was due to take place. Greece has repeatedly asked Britain to permanently return the 2,500-year-old sculptures. A British diplomat took them from the Parthenon Temple in the early 19th century. Mitsotakis told it was not a question of ownership, but reunification, and that you would not, quote, cut the Mona Lisa in half. When asked about Mitsotakis' statement about the meeting, Sunak's office said Britain's relationship with Greece was, quote, hugely important, and that the countries needed to work together on global challenges. It added that Sunak's deputy was available to meet Mitsotakis to discuss the issue instead. The British government has long ruled out giving up ownership of the marbles, and maintains they were legally acquired. The Greek government has been in talks with the British Museum on a possible loan deal, but a spokesperson for Sunak said there were no plans to return the sculptures. Road to the White House next. Waiting for Nikki Haley inside a college gymnasium were 2,500 people packed into folding chairs and onto bleachers, dancing and waving signs. Outside, a line of hundreds more in quarter zip followers and sweater vests snaked around the building, turned away by public safety officials who said the event was already at capacity. Billed as a town hall, Haley's return to her home state of South Carolina instead exploded into a full-blown rally. A triumphant return for the former governor who has surpassed Florida Governor Ron DeSantis in polling in the New Hampshire Republican presidential primary and is running neck and neck with him in Iowa. The event, Haley's first in the state since her fellow South Carolinian Senator Tim Scott dropped out of the race earlier this month, served as a mark of Haley's ascent in the GOP. 
GOP primary. But if there is anywhere critical for Haley to top the GOP frontrunner Donald Trump, it will be in her home state. And the former president, who drew overwhelming cheers in South Carolina when he walked onto the field during the South Carolina Clemson Palmetto Bowl game over the weekend, is still running 30 points ahead of her here. Haley's rise in national polling and in the early states is undisputed, but it remains to be seen whether her surge will do any significant damage to Trump's lead. Welcome back. Authorities are investigating whether there are contaminated saline products in Australian hospitals after a man's death at a busy hospital and 44 other infections in one state. Queensland Health issued an urgent quarantine notice for two separate Interpharma sodium chloride products after the man died at Birderim Hospital on the Sunshine Coast. Saline solution meant to clean wounds making hospital patients sick. I do not want to say confidently uh, that all risk has been removed. Revealed last night, two saline products have been identified as the source of an outbreak of Ralstonia. Ralstonia is a common organism in the environment. It thrives in water. It is commonly identified in rivers, streams and lakes. It is especially concerning to those with significant underlying medical conditions or who have implanted medical devices. The bacterium is being linked to the death of a woman in her 80s at Budrum Private Hospital. There are now three confirmed cases in Queensland, three more probable cases. Nationwide, 43 cases have been identified. This warning sent to all public and some private hospitals on Friday, alerting staff to the risk and ordering the urgent removal of the products which are imported from India and Greece. A multi-state investigation is still underway to determine if there are still other sources as yet unidentified. North Korean state media reported that leader Kim Jong-un has received photos of the White House and Pentagon taken by its recently launched spy satellite, coming a day after tense exchanges between Washington and Pyongyang during a UN Security Council meeting over the launch. And a UN official has called North Korea's recent spy satellite launch a serious threat to aviation and maritime traffic. North Korean state media said Tuesday its leader Kim Jong-un received photos of, quote, major target regions in the United States, taken by its recently launched spy satellite. KCNA said the batch includes photos of the White House, Pentagon, and U.S. aircraft carriers. Seoul officials say the North's claims could not be confirmed as it has not released the photos. Contention over the satellite spilled over into a snap meeting of the U.N. Security Council a day earlier, which was called to convene after last week's launch following dozens of ballistic missile tests over the past 20 months. It resulted in a rare, direct, public exchange between the U.S. and North Korea. Here's U.S. Ambassador Linda Thompson-Greenfield. The DPRK is unabashedly trying to advance its nuclear weapons delivery systems by testing ballistic, ballistic missile technology in clear violation of this council's resolutions. In unplanned remarks at the end of the meeting, Thompson Greenfield rejected Pyongyang's claims that its launches were defensive actions in response to military provocation by the U.S. and its allies, but extended an offer for dialogue, quote, without preconditions. The United States is just threatening us with a nuclear weapon. In response, North Korea's Ambassador Kim Song defended what he called his country's, quote, legitimate right to develop its weapon systems on par with the U.S., North Korea has been under UN sanctions for its ballistic missile and nuclear programs for nearly two decades. But for the past several years, the UN Security Council has been divided on how to deal with Pyongyang, with veto powers Russia and China arguing against further sanctions. Washington says such protection from Moscow and Beijing only emboldens North Korea to continue to flout UN resolutions. Fears are setting in for the safety of the Ukrainian soldiers as tens of thousands of troops man frontline positions in the 21-month-old war with Russia. A severe snowstorm caused havoc in Ukraine amid fears Moscow could attack the power grid with airstrikes. A severe snowstorm caused havoc in Ukraine on Monday. 
This video from Ukrainian authorities shows what it was like out on the roads. Hundreds of cars and trucks were stuck in snowdrifts, some over six feet high, the government said in a social media post. Hundreds of settlements were without power and more than a dozen roads were closed. According to the emergency services, more than 1,200 rescue workers are managing the cleanup effort. The south and central parts of the country were the worst hit, according to Ukraine's interior minister. But as residents dig out, tens of thousands of troops remain in frontline positions in the war with Russia. Kyiv residents said the harsh winter did not bother them much. It's just regular weather. What's more important is keeping the boys warm in the trenches. We will survive it here. I start crying when I think about soldiers. It is hard to imagine what it feels like there. These are very heavy thoughts. The storm is also renewing fears that Moscow could target Ukraine's power grid this winter. Kyiv says Russia has attacked infrastructure 60 times in the past few weeks. On Sunday, President Volodymyr Zelensky thanked Ukraine's military for fighting Russian attacks and its rescue services for tackling extreme weather. In Russian-held Crimea, officials said nearly half a million people were without power. Russian-installed authorities declared a state of emergency Monday and reported that one person died, ten were injured and hundreds evacuated. Over in Sierra Leone, as at least 20 people have been killed and several were wounded in a series of attacks that targeted military barracks and prisons in the country. Sierra Leone authorities said Monday that 20 people were killed and nearly 2,000 prisoners escaped during Sunday's attack on the capital. Gunfire was heard ringing out across Freetown as assailants targeted a military barracks, a prison and other locations. An army spokesperson told that the 20 dead included 13 soldiers, three assailants, a police officer, a civilian and someone working in private security. The government has since reduced an all-day curfew to a nightly one, and police were checking vehicles at checkpoints. Shops and businesses started to reopen on Monday afternoon, but the fear among residents remains. Like, I'm in first and then they for experience. This woman says it was the first time she had heard a gunshot and that she hid under her bed. The government blamed the attacks on renegade soldiers, and this resident recalled encountering them. Military vehicles approached us, and some of the officers said we should shout forcefully, President Mada Bio must go. Some of us wanted to answer, and some refused to shout. We asked him for which reason we should say that, and he responded by asking if we had the ability to buy expensive bags of rice. Let us come Hours here. after the rampage, President Julius Matabio assured citizens calm had been restored and that the attackers would be held to account. Last year, anti-government protests erupted over soaring living costs, and at least 21 civilians were killed in the unrest. Sierra Leone, which is still recovering from a 1991 to 2002 civil war in which more than 50,000 were killed, has been tense since Bio was re-elected in June. Welcome back. The Vermont suspect pleaded not guilty for shooting three Palestinian students. For more on that story and much more, let's take you around the world today. The suspect in the shooting of three college students of Palestinian descent in Vermont, USA, pleaded not guilty. An unidentified 38-year-old man created chaos by using the emergency exit on a Southwest Airlines plane at Louis Armstrong, New Orleans International Airport in the USA. WHO published a press release yesterday voicing the urgency of taking climate action to mitigate the impact of climate change on global health. The Peruvian authorities destroyed more than 19 tons of illegal drugs. It was the country's fourth massive drug burn this year. A Chilean startup is reinventing the wheel almost literally by recycling new car tires into modern electric car batteries.
And that is all we have for you on World News Tonight. Join us again tomorrow as we bring you updates from across the globe. If you missed any of today's programs, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash other than English. Tonight, we are leaving you in the USA as global pop star Beyonce's film made headlines following its premiere in Beverly Hills, California. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.